to uh, to you, Joanna, and then I'll Thank hand you. over. Um, so Joanna uh, Dupree is a, a mediator and very, um, I suppose you could say, very interested in in the you know in a in a life and in a world of um, of people of humans. And so your topic uh, today is very much uh, for mediators, looking at um, and how we uh, protect and survive and uh, thrive in our work. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you very much uh, for presenting uh, today for International Mediation Awareness Week. I'll hand over to you, Joanna. Thank you so much. I am really, really pleased to, to see everyone here today. Um, I feel always privileged to, to, to share everything what I learned through my life and uh, what was shared with me, um, because I believe that uh, uh, we as the, the mediators, we are creating a very special community. Uh, we are uh, people who are working with other people's uh, trauma. And uh, we are having, we are all human that we are all processing as well our own uh, issues in, in our life. And uh, we have to have tools and uh, I believe quick tools we need uh, to, to put ourselves back uh, on track and uh, to be uh, fully uh, operational uh, in our uh, craft. <clears throat> and uh, okay, I will share maybe my screen with you guys. Because I prepared a PowerPoint to create more visual attentiveness. <laughs> uh, yeah, that uh, uh, as I said, uh, I strongly believe that. Uh, we are needing more self-attentiveness to be able to self-regulate ourselves. We, most of us, is uh, uh, really processing uh, uh, everything what is happening to us on the auto mode. Uh, we are not noticing our reactions. Uh, we are not noticing what is happening uh, to us, uh, what is happening uh, to our body and how we are storing those emotions and what the uh, effect that they have on our life. Uh, it's impossible to talk uh, uh, about uh, this topic without uh, talking about uh, vicarious uh, trauma, uh, which is a very part of our job as dispute resolution practitioners. Uh, whether we are coming from counseling, social work, uh, whether we are coming from a uh, legal background, law enforcement, we are going to, to, to meet this uh, uh, trauma uh, um, e as a result of our job. <clears throat> that it is called as well secondary trauma. That is not uh, uh, we personally experience traumatic event by through empathizing, through uh, spending time with people, listening to their stories. Uh, we are uh, impacted uh, by their pain and suffering, uh, and uh, this has a very physical and uh, uh, psychological impact and is similar to post-traumatic stress and is often uh, um, seen as burnout because it has similar symptoms and the start. That many people uh, with vicarious trauma, they are uh, having a uh, bundle of uh, intrusive thoughts that they are starting to think negative thoughts uh, uh, about uh, themselves, but as well they are seeing, uh, finding a lot of similarities in their own life because to, to uh, really, though this trauma is uh, a form of trigger because something is responding in us to that. And this could be a very, you know, story that the person said that, we are very sensitive to, to hear about particular topic. 
and therefore this is uh, you know attached to us and we we are processing this and we are not processing this only through our mind but we are processing through our body that we are having problems with sleeping we are having a problem uh, with concentration we are experiencing compassion fatigue uh, we cannot be there for others, which is extremely important in our uh, area of job, because we everything what we are doing is us to be for others. And this creates us well, can create uh, emotional numbness, um, um, avoidance. We are going to 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 be very comfortable to be around people uh, experiencing um, um, some emotional issues and uh, um, this can uh, create a lot of uh, a lot of anxiety problem of sleep that uh, it is very important to, to observe yourself for this particular uh, symptoms if we are going to to see that this particular symptoms are uh, present uh, uh, in us uh, then we need start to, to be very carefully, attentively observe what is happening. And uh, um, the personalized intervention for uh, mediators is, of course, uh, uh, self-care. And self-care with us, everything what we are going to, to look uh, here today, because there are, there's a lot of tools that we can use uh, to help uh, uh, ourselves uh, and cope with a vicarious trauma or burnout. But uh, as well, I believe self-care is the um, prevention tools box, uh, which going to allow us uh, to uh, not to experience vicarious trauma or uh, to, to cope better if this is going to happen. And the same uh, when we are going to experience burnout, we can see, oh, yeah, that is simply burnout. I, I need to, to do something with that. And I have this, this and this tool in my toolbox and not uh, go into the loop of, uh, you know, thinking uh, that something is wrong with me or I am a bad person because we are having as well a tendency to think in this way. And of course, if all these tools are not uh, uh, helping us. This could be that because this other underlying issue triggered by this uh, uh, particular uh, story of our clients uh, creating vicarious trauma, triggering another trauma within, within us, which was not processed, but is uh, starting to, to, to show uh, uh, itself <clears throat> in a form of our behavior or physical um, um yeah, issues um because we can feel as we're extremely exhausted very very tired and um, that's important as well to 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 be aware that uh, it is uh, our support groups uh, our friends uh, peers group uh, at work um uh, and support groups for people who already are going through a vicarious trauma, uh, not to be alone, because when we are alone, we are um, going deeper, like uh, uh, losing ourselves within ourselves, and not in the way, meditative way, but uh, the way which is unproductive, which is dissolving uh, the, the, the best part in, in us. We are starting to doubt ourselves. We are starting to be uh, stop loving ourselves, and of course, if the, anything is uh, support groups are not helping, our families uh, not helpful uh, enough for us. We need to, to look for a professional support. We need to talk to a, a professional uh, um, counselor, a coach, or uh, other pro mental health professional, uh, psychiatrist even. But there are a lot of uh, self-care tools uh, like exercises. Exercises are 
removing us from the uh, mental state because when we are upset, uh, when we are uh, in a um, state of uh, being uh, uh, dysregulated uh, emotionally, um, we are having tendency to be very non-active. And this is because the brain requires a lot of energy from uh, from our body to process the, 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 the mental processes. Uh, our brain is only like 2% of all body mass, but needs 20% of energy. Therefore, when we are, you know, processing uh, uh, our unhappiness, we are, uh, our pain and suffering that we heard from others is coming to us almost like ours. Uh, and uh, it's burning out uh, and uh, doesn't allow us to, to move. And uh, therefore the attentiveness to see, to observe that this is happening. Oh, I am sitting, I am not moving. I am, I am constantly thinking about that. I need to do something. I need to go for a walk. Because when we are walking, we are moving. And energy is uh, uh, move uh, from uh, our thinking process into movement. And therefore, when we are moving, when we are exercising, we don't have much time for uh, thinking and dividing in, into you know, particles, this uh, uh, issue that uh, we are uh, overthinking. And, uh, you know, someone said that thinking and constant thinking and overthinking things leads to paradoxes. And we are reaching the, the moment of paradoxical um, uh, awareness of uh, things that didn't even happen, but... Uh, we created this in, in our mind. And uh, therefore, uh, another uh, tool is, of course, meditation, relaxation, uh, spending time with loved ones. And uh, as we're gardening, gardening is very grounding. You physically need to put your hands into dirt and, uh, and grant yourself. And uh, people who are gardening, they, they know that... Uh, they are connecting more with everything and they are less connected with their, you know, monkey mind. And this is what uh, uh, um, I wanted to, to um, talk about, that uh, self-attentiveness is the really key element uh, for us to, to find out what is happening in us. We have to teach our mind to observe ourselves, to teach our, uh, ourselves to see the observing mind observing us. And uh, uh, it is like sinking ourselves and uh, go through investigation, like we are investigating uh, uh, our clients, what is happening with them, what is happening to them. Uh, how looks the environment, what is causing the, the, the suffering, for example, in counseling, but uh, as well, maybe not so deep in, in uh, uh, conflict resolution practice. Uh, we need to do the same investigation with ourselves. And we need to be kind. And we need to, 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 to know that this uh, multi-layered process um, that... Uh, this is not that we are going to, to, to use one tool and everything is solved. Uh, we are going to, to find, uh, you know, like the nesting dolls. We are going to remove one. Ooh, there's another one. And the more we are going to, 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 to be uh, removing, the more we are going to find, but less painful is going to be. And better we are going to be uh, managing uh, this what is happening to us and uh, self-attentiveness is uh, about uh, you know stopping to be self-ignorant because we are saying ah oh, no, oh, this okay oh this no problem you know i was going through much more difficult situation in my life and uh, i was able to manage but guess what 
and one day you cannot manage because uh, even you know a cup can hold only so much water yeah we are having as well particular capacity for pain and uh, the full attentive mind is uh, something what uh, i want you to to start to practice because uh, it creates thoughtfulness, it creates awareness and, and focus and uh, research. And it was only published uh, this, this year in, um, and presented in uh, uh, Mindfulness and Mediation uh, Symposium, uh, where all best uh, minds in psychiatry and psychology were present, were showing that uh, uh, young adults were able to improve their focus outwards by improving their focus inwards. That the more we are learning about ourselves and we are learning focusing within us, the better we are focusing on others, the more empathy as well we have for others the more understanding and the, the more non-judgmental we could be. And um, uh, it's showing as well, uh, this very interesting because as well research is showing that when uh, uh, we are calm, uh, our uh, attentiveness increases uh, because when we are in our uh, middle ear is better hearing uh, human voice because this shows that when we are in a fight and flight response, when we are very upset, our inner ear is starting to close in and we are not able to hear what other person is saying to us. We are not attentive to a human voice. We are attentive for the signs of danger. And this is yelling, this is shouting, this is you know physical aggression. Um, often we as mediators are finding ourselves in our self-conflict uh, situation. Uh, although we are specialized in, uh, in mediating other people's conflict, we are often uh, not the best in the self-conflict uh, resolution. And uh, we are holding, uh, everyone is holding some sort of cognitive dissonance uh, where we hold in co two conflicting values and beliefs and attitudes. And, uh, you, you know, in uh, uh, me as mediators, we should be non-judgmental, but time to time we are. And uh, there is, a, you know, in a battle that, oh, yeah, shit, I, sorry for my language. Uh, I shouldn't do that. Yeah, it, it, it's, I should be non-judgmental. But... Uh, um, evolutionary psychology found out the judgment is a very part of our uh, threat management system. It is embedded in our mammalian brain that we are scanning all the environment for possible danger. And this is a process is an built in, in in our DNA. This is nothing wrong with us. But when we know that the process uh, is occurring and is simply searching for, for the possible uh, danger, and nowadays we don't have like a, a really physical threat unless we are living uh, uh, in the war zone, then uh, uh, our brain is searching for uh, other sign of threat because uh, some psychological threats we can perceive as threats to our life, that uh, uh, simply be kind to yourself if you are going to find yourself judging, this is a part of uh, uh, our threat management system. Simply observe this and see uh, what really is triggering this judgment. Maybe there's some sort of fear behind that. That uh, the four uh, is very important to, to uh, empower yourself in self-regulation system, uh, which uh, allows us to manage uh, uh, our energy states. Because uh, when we are upset and we are, uh, as I said, uh, 
thinking negatively. Uh, we are going through a very difficult time because of, of trauma, uh, other people's trauma. And we cannot even connect time to time with uh, um, our uh, people closest to us. Um, there is because we don't know how to regulate uh, uh, our emotions and uh, they are showing itself as behavior because our emotions are in our subconscious mind. Our subconscious mind is 95% of our conscious mind. That when you are going to imagine yourself, for example, swimming in the water, the, the heads that is above the water, this is your conscious mind. This is only, you know, 5%. We are conscious of our behaviors, but all the, the behaviors that we are not observing are coming from our subconscious mind and mostly from, from our childhood. We are having as well the tendency of the looping uh, uh, mind, uh, uh, the mind that loops on the same thoughts. The uh, research is showing that uh, uh, we are having tendency to think more negative thoughts than positive thoughts. And this is as well coming from our survival system. We need to be very critical. We need to be very judgmental to survive. That uh, in the you know original state, uh, as hunters, gathers, we were constantly searching environment for possible threats that the negative thought is the part of that, what is going to happen to, to, to me, what I am going to survive today. Uh, but those thoughts uh, were, were turned into negative way of thinking about uh, uh, ourselves or others, that uh, we are thinking up to 70,000 thoughts per day, and from that is 80% there are negative thoughts, and then 95% there are the thoughts from the day before. Uh, and we are finding uh, ourselves on the hamster wheel. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm not thinking anymore. I am not thinking now. Now it's a new thought, but we are thinking still the same. And uh, this requires self-observation, the, the diving inside yourself to see what we are really thinking. <clears throat> I would like you to, to uh, reflect uh, the question. You can make a screenshot of that and do this at home. Uh, if you were free to think of anything you want, what would you think of instead? We as uh, um, mediators, we need to do the reflecting part of our job is very important. And there's a part as well of this reflection. And this is what I was uh, uh, telling you before. Many of our values and beliefs are uh, taken from our childhood. As children, we don't have uh, our prefrontal cortex developed, that our logical thinking is not there yet. Everything what you are learning, we are learning through observation and feelings. That when we are observing particular behavior, particular way of solving things, or particular way of processing uh, problems, uh, we are as children copy and paste. Oh, this is the way you know to communicate. Okay, copy and paste. Mama is, uh, you know, in this particular way behaving. Uh, uh, that this is the way to 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 cope, and uh, and uh, this is something what we are we're doing. Uh, uh, unconsciously, we are not knowing that the system uh, is running on the background, making us to um, behave in the particular problem. And it's not only our parents, but as well people of authority, our teachers, they could be our peers that we were seeing uh, in our youth as uh, um, people of authority. And we are put this as a program within us to cope with issues in our life, but not always the scoping mechanism is supporting our well-being. And this is what I would like you as well <clears throat> um, to do. Um, I would like you to, to turn on your cameras, maybe. And uh, this is the inner language awareness. Why I am talking uh, uh, about that? Because we are not having always <clears throat> awareness uh, of 
the language we are uh, speaking and what this language is doing to us. And we answer, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, problem, problem. We are loving for what problem. Today we are having so many problems. And um, I would like you to experience what language does to us. That uh, there's a little exercise. I would like you to close your eyes, close your eyes, and say a word problem within yourself. And again, problem. And repeat this and observe what this word is doing to your body, where this is traveling the energy. Problem. Mm. Again, problem. Do you see what is happening with your jaw, with your throat? How it's traveling down to your chest and to your body? Problem. Oh. Oh, it feels like that, yeah? But okay, open your eyes. Shake, 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 shake this energy. <laughs> Good. Okay, close your eyes. <clears throat> and now say challenge. And again, challenge. And observe how this energy is traveling. Do you see it's opening up your chest? Challenge. Hmm. Challenge. <clears throat> You can open your eyes. And I will show you another word that I want you to, 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 to create the memory of importance, how words are creating our reality in the sense that they are making an energetical imprint in our body. They are changing our uh, neurological uh, uh, expression. <clears throat> that close again your, your eyes, please. <clears throat> Thank you. And say it, there's another word that we are loving to say. Difficult. 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 And observe how this word, what this does to us when we are saying difficult. Where is traveling the energy of that? What this does to our inner, inner world, our inner body universe? Difficult. Blah. Okay, you can open your eyes. Shake, 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 shake. Close your eyes again. And say, puzzle. Puzzle. Again, puzzle. Do you see this opening up your chest? Feel slight? Puzzle. And you see English uh, uh, language is spelled that... I want you to know what the spell you are putting on yourself by using particular words. And as well on the client, when we are using the word, what is your problem? But okay, what is the challenge you are having right now in your life? Let's look into the you know, pieces of this puzzle. Yeah, that we can use different language to express the same, but this completely in a different way is creating different impression and expression of ourselves. <clears throat> Therefore, I would like you to use one of the very quick forms of uh, helping yourself. Why? Looking up is allowing us to remove us from unwanted emotional state. Why? Because every emotion has own motion. Our body needs particular state of body to feel it. That when we are upset, for example, we need to collapse our shoulders. We need to put our head down. We need to, to collapse our chest. We are collapsing within ourselves to feel sadness. <clears throat> but try to look up. Try to look up. And try to feel sad. It's impossible. <clears throat> because this is a creative mind is turning on. This is a <clears throat> mind of uh, the dreamer. 
the resolver. I have this idea. And you start to think, yeah? And you are opening up your chest. You are opening up your throat, yeah? You are not protecting yourself. When you are uh, fearful, you are protecting your bo whole body. We are trying to, to be smaller, not visible. <clears throat> that when you are going to, to, you know, to feel upset, do that. Uh, another form of, this is my beautiful drawing, <laughs> another uh, form of uh, uh, dissociating yourself from other people's emotions to put yourself in an observer position. Their emotions are not our emotions. Their issue is not our issue, but we are there for them. We are there to see what is happening to them. And I am using this in, in, in coaching since years. And uh, I was only recently attending uh, um, Harvard Law School uh, mediation program there. And they are teaching now as well, they are using this uh, balcony observer position that you are putting yourself uh, outside the, the, the conflict to see the big picture. This allow you to, to, to see everything, but not to be with them, because then we are not seeing everything. Yeah. That uh, another form you can see like in the aquarium. Yeah. You are the scientist. You are curious as you should be as a mediator. You are seeing everything and you can empathize because you are seeing the beauty in all of those people <clears throat> and whatever is uh, sorry happening to them. You see more how you can help them. You, you can see beyond the pain, but you can see everything together. And I really uh, advise you to put yourself in the observer, uh, observer position because you are then in the shoes of a, a mediator who is a scientist in the same time, seeing more, feeling more empathizing, but seeing the big picture and being neutral because you are not going between them. But you are still turning your judgmental mind because you have to judge what is happening there. Yeah? <clears throat> I believe that every mediator should be meditator. <laughs> And mediation, most of us is thinking meditation as something difficult. You, you know, you have to sit on the rock somewhere in nowhere and meditate in uh, Kundalini Arohana. <clears throat> no, you don't. You don't. Uh, mediation uh, is as where, you know, going in one and observing yourself. Mediation, uh, uh, meditation is uh, when you are uh, planting your plants. You are meditating. You are simply not present in your head. You are present as awareness outside. Planting the plants. That's everything what you are doing. The other way to very quickly to put yourself in a meditation state is close your eyes and imagine leaf floating on the uh, water surface. When you are doing this, and close your eyes for, for one second and imagine a leaf. You have, everyone was seeing a leaf on the water. Yeah? And imagine the leaf is traveling of the, on the surface of the water. And follow only the leaf. Go with the leaf. That's right. That's right. And you see that your mind is not doing anything. It's only observing and going with the leaf. Beautiful. And the same you can, when you are watching the cloud, you can imagine you are watching the cloud and the cloud is traveling. You are floating with the cloud. This is meditation. For me, it is quick. <clears throat> I want you as well to be... Uh, you know, really non-judgmental, this non-judgmental awareness. Be kind to yourself. See 
beautiful things within you because we were all made wonderful. And uh, how to be present? Uh, we are having tend tendency to multitasking, but uh, uh, Harvard uh, research was showing that we are not able to multitask, we are switch tasking. And we are switch tasking, we are losing uh, a lot of energy of our brain, we need to, to reconnect, it uh, creates uh, uh, additional anxiety, which is not supporting our well-being. Uh, and especially when we are uh, already experiencing any form of trauma. That uh, simply concentrate on one thing you, you do. Finish this, then go to the, to the next thing. And of course, as, uh, as uh, mothers and fathers, and uh, we can uh, do other things uh, simultaneously, but we cannot do big things simultaneously, that uh, we cannot type and uh, research is uh, showing that when we are typing, for example, and we are talking with someone, we are not uh, hearing everything. And we should be attentive listeners. That try to, to through your meditation, uh, I uh, advise you to start to practice active listening to hear beyond this what you are learned to hear. what you hear else, what is there else that I am not hearing, yeah? Another is uh, uh, very quick uh, as well, helping yourself uh, process of flower sniffing. This is a breathing process. And uh, of course you have to choose your imaginary flower that you are not allergic to. <laughs> but, uh, Close your eyes and imagine you are holding the, the, the flower over here. close to your nose. And take a deep breath in and out very slow. One, two, three. And exhale. One, two, three. Hmm. And again. And you can do this at work. You can open your eyes. You can do this at work. No one is going to know that you are smelling your flower. <laughs> and it's very quickly as well as improving our mood. Uh, as well breathing. We are not aware that we are taking 20,000 breaths per day which is quite a lot. And breath is the primary force of life. Not food, breath. It is the very first sign that we are alive. And as such, breath is the blessing within itself. And this is what I would like you to, 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 to experience as well. Close your eyes very quick. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath in and out and say blessing. 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 And you can see how this word is traveling here, yeah? that the spell of this word with your body. But simply use this as well as a tool for uh, allowing, you can open your eyes, uh, as a tool of uh, allowing yourself to put in a different state of mind, to connect to yourself, to feel yourself, to be kind to yourself. There's another breathing, which uh, you can see many people who are smoking, they love this way of breathing. Because, because you are releasing air upwards and the animals are doing this, oh, howling wolves, because this is opening our chest. This is increasing the, the energy within us. And I want you to, to try this as well. Take a dip in and release. And 
and very slowly. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> Then this is another, because when you are going to even as opposite to that, try to do the same with the chin down when this is your position of upset and try to breathe like that. What you are connecting to. Yeah, <laughs> the, you, you can feel the difference. And this is this what I want you to feel, because only when we are feeling, we can learn something and change something. And uh, self heavening yeah and uh, there's many processes of in self having you know people are hugging themselves but uh, us as mediator we don't have much uh, time for for hugging ourselves before mediation but we can rub our hands right we are going to see how the energy is flowing when we are rubbing our hands we are soothing ourselves try it rub your hands yeah, 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 yeah. Do you see? Like, like that. You, you have to, like a child. <laughs> Candies are coming. Yeah. <laughs> this is one of this uh, as well uh, ways to detach yourself from unwanted state of mind. I want you as well to try the compassionate inquiry, which is um, a process built up by um, uh, uh, Gabo Mate, uh, which is a very famous uh, uh, trauma expert and uh, physician, and uh, very well educated in human uh, psychology. And uh, he advised to scan our body for trauma and ask questions. This is the form that we can do for ourselves. That because we are storing trauma in our body, we are storing uh, emotions of uh, upset in our stomach, uh, in our chest, whatever hurts us. That uh, in our head as well, we are having headaches because of that as well. Oh, I have here, you know, this too much. <clears throat> that is good to, to scan if my head could speak what would it tell me? And I, you, you can make a screenshot of that, guys, and do that at home, in, in silence, with yourself. Ask the body, scan your body for this energy that is stuck there in our body and is manifesting itself as well with our behavior, with this how we are feeling about ourselves, but as well how we are feeling about others. <clears throat> what I want you as well to, to, to use, I advise you to, to, to use, um, is to use uh, water as uh, in, in an attentive way, in, in a mindful way. In Stuttgart University, uh, in a water department, uh, it was made an experiment with students. They, they were sitting in the big uh, uh, university Ola, Ola and uh, they were having, uh, uh, the distance was be between them uh, like five meters and uh, it was four different types of water given to them and they needed to put finger for, you know, few minutes to each of this container. It was water from a tap, water from spring water, uh, water from, from a puddle uh, and another type of water. And they were, you know, putting their finger and then they froze this, this, this water. And what I want to tell you, these pictures that you are having under the, the shower head, they are the pictures of each of these four participants, and it was more of them, uh, of the uh, energy print frozen in the water. And you can see regardless of type of water, we are having unique energy print. That's so how unique is our iris, how unique is our DNA, so unique is our energy print. It's like our signature. 
And because uh, the big uh, now is a massive body of research regarding bodies, con uh, water consciousness, water memory. Uh, and we are 75% uh, of water. We are the water solution uh, being. Therefore, we are very sensitive to water. Water is our friend. Water is this what is allowing us to, to cleanse. Water is used in the traditions since thousands of years as well for cleansing. But we can use water uh, attentively in uh, um, our daily hygiene. When we are going, go into the water temple. It's a different meaning that go to you know, take a shower. You are buffing yourself, you are washing yourself, you are cleansing yourself, you are healing yourself. And according to the, the research, water is memorizing you. It's knowing your print. And water is as well reacting according to uh, um, Dr. Masaru Emoto uh, research to this, what we are saying. You, you, you all know this, this, this research. When we are saying something negative to ourselves, we are imprinting the energy that you experience. As you, you remember, yeah? Problem and puzzle, yeah? The difference in that, this is imprinted in our body. That is another tool that you can every day, before you are starting the day, use it. And uh, this is what I want you as well to do, uh, or advise you to do, uh, to send to yourself um, an email. An email uh, and ask yourself every day, what are you going to give others? What is going to be the, your gift to other people today? You know, I'm going to smile to everyone today. Or, you know, I'm going to be very attentive. Have, you know, create focus what you are going to give to others. But I swear, ask yourself, what are you going to give yourself? What is going to be your gift to yourself today? I'm going to be kind for myself. I'm going to listen to, to my body. And I want you as well to uh, start every week, every month, write a quick email to yourself. And you can put in the email the date of delivery, you know, when you are sending this uh, a little uh, uh, icon next to, you can click into this uh, triangle upside down and or arrow, and you can uh, choose date when this is going to be delivered, that you can deliver this to the end of the month or deliver this uh, to the end uh, uh, of the week. And simply write one sentence of self-care, how you are going to, to, you know, look after yourself this week or this month. One center of self-encouragement, for example, self-care, I am going to, to meditate this, this week, every, you know, day I am going to spend three minutes meditating, trying to look into myself. And then self-encouragement sentence. You are awesome. I love you. Yeah. And then ask yourself who you want to become this week or this month. How do you want to be perceived by yourself? What do you want? What do you want to be? And send to yourself and treat at the end of the week or in the month. And I want you to, to be researcher of yourself, observer of yourself. I want you to, to invite you to be a meditating mediator, compassionate mediator, saying, you know, blessing to yourself every day. 20,000 blessings you can say to yourself every day by only breathing. Yeah? I bless myself 20,000 <laughs> times today. Oh. <laughs> Send the, the, the letter, the, the email to yourself. It's really beautiful uh, way of, uh, you know, looking after yourself as well, reflecting 
and that's what we are doing. Hmm? <laughs> that's wonderful. Does anyone have any other final thoughts or comments before we conclude this session? I see that there's some lovely comments in the chat. Oh, sorry. Oh, I would love to, to read them. Oh, I didn't have time, <laughs> but I am so thankful, guys. I really, really appreciate each and every of you. I, I am very, very grateful that you choose to spend time with me today. Uh, I feel honored. I feel blessed. Thank you for sharing your blessing, your breath with me in the same time and going through uh, all the stuff that I was showing you. I wish you a beautiful, blissful and powerful day. <laughs> Thank you. That's a wonderful point too. <laughs> Thank you so much.